share a word on presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ to you know people we come in contact with. And it pretty well came about, as, as Mike said back in uh, uh, probably 93, I think we started coming to uh, the church. And one of the things that the uh, pastor allowed us to do was to start a ministry is called CAM, which is Kingdom Advancement Ministries. And uh, you know, I was fortunate when we were in Orange County for a couple of years, I uh, participated in that program at a church over there. And then when we came over here, we also did it. So I know, uh, I remember, I was th- trying to think back who all did that. You know, we had Diana, Johnny Garza, we had Mike and Maria. Uh, I think there was a couple more that are still here, but yeah, Kenny and Dixie, and a lot of people have moved on and moved out of state. But uh, the the thing that that really, you know, uh, drove this uh, was ministry. It was it was an outreach. So when people came and they visited, you, you got the information of who they were, where they lived, and everything. So we go out and call on those visitors. And if we didn't have enough people to call on, well, we just would go out to the to the street. We'd go to uh, the park. You know, we, we were always prayed up and we were ready to go. And, uh, you know, the whole thing about that ministry, and, and there's a lot of ways to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. So this is just one of, of several ways, but it gives you the foundations of, of what to do, you know, how to do it. And, uh, you know, the, the first thing that really hit me was when we talk about giving the gospel, when you put a definition on the gospel, it's good news. You know, it's something that we can be excited about. It, it's in our it's in our nature to share good news. When you get a new job, you get a raise, you you buy a car, a birth of a grandchild or or a, a child. Uh, you know, we share that with people. That that that's good news. And when you think about the gospel, you know, we're, we're talking about our sins forgiven, eternal life. Uh, when uh, you know, and that we'll. When we die and this body stops working, our spirit goes on and we have eternal life with our, our Lord and Father and, and Jesus. And that is, is, is such a good message that, you know, I don't know why we wouldn't want to share it all the time. It's, it's in our nature, even as kids. When kids come home, man, I got an A, I won this. And, you know, we always like to tell other people about the good news we have. So, you know, we really need to settle in our hearts that, the gospel of Jesus Christ is fantastic news that we should be sharing wherever we go. And, you know, it's not always going to be accepted, but, you know, when we've got that in our, in our hearts, that's, that's a settled and done deal that it's good news. You know, we can walk in, we're singing that song, hope and joy and peace and love and life. You know, we've got that. There's a lot of people in this world that are sad and depressed. And I mean, just had a look at the news last week. There's a lot of people who are, Saddened and depressed is what's going on. Well, we've got hope well above that, and we're not we're not going to worry. It's in God's hands. So, not only are we, uh, you know, should we be sharing it because it's good news, but we're also called to that. So, if you can put up that first scripture, Karen, Second Corinthians five seventeen. So, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. We have a ministry from God, no matter what your ministry might be in this church, we have a ministry of reconciliation to bring reconciliation of people to God. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed us to the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might be the righteousness of God. You know, it's God speaking through us when we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, you know, we don't have to rely upon it just being us. We've got Christ in us. We've got the Holy Spirit with us. So, you know, we've got a lot of uh, help to, to get us through this. But the, um, 
you know, one of the uh, the things that that we wanted to, uh, to I also want to talk about is not in presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ is that we also have a testimony, and testimonies will help us to relate to other people. You know, it doesn't matter if you've got some uh, fancy, I, mean, I don't know, fancy, but a big testimony where, you know, God really saved you out of a, a life of, you know, big sin. You know, I, I was a pretty good sinner when I was a sinner. I like to think I'm a pretty good Christian now that I'm a Christian. But, you know, there's some people that, yeah, you know, I mean, we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But, you know, some people do it a lot more than others. And so, you know, I know when we went through... uh uh, putting our testimonies together. You know, one of the things I found out at that time, Victor Sarver and Carol Sarver used to be at our church where they went to Oregon. And my testimony was almost exactly like Victor's. We did the same things. We were into the, you know, same goofy stuff. And I'll just leave it at that. And, uh, you know, but then you take and you look at like Pastor Carol, who grew up in a church, never really got too far out of whack and you know, she accepted Christ as a young young girl, and, and she stuck with it. Well, you can say, well, that's not very exciting. Well, there's still a lot of things that God did and changed her. And it, whether you've changed from, you know, being really super bad or you, you just changed, you know, every one of us have told a lie at one time, right? Is there anyone here who has never told one lie? Okay, so so, so that makes you a liar. Right? So, I mean, we don't want to say, oh, we're a liar, you know, but if you've told a lie, that's what you are. So, you know, we, we all need, we all need the, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, so when, when you think about a testimony, a testimony, you should write down what your testimony is. And it should be able, you should be able to share that in about two minutes with somebody. So, I mean, we can get, you start, telling all the little details and everything, you're getting way, way too long, and you'll lose people's interest. So you want to be able to write a testimony and then practice giving it to somebody. You know, there, there's plenty of people in here, a spouse, a, a, a brother, a sister, but, you know, share that testimony, but write it down, and you want to talk about where you were, what God did for you, and where you are today, the things that God's doing in your life. And in about two minutes... You should be able to, you know, relate to somebody. And what's really, what's really interesting is if you're going to go out and share the gospel, that if you do it with somebody else, it's amazing that the, between two people, almost all the time, the testimony of one of the two is going to match up with, be very similar to who you're sharing that gospel with. So you automatically start to relate to somebody because they've been through the same thing that, that you've been through. So uh, if you sit down and do that and you want to be prepared, bring it in here. I'll take a look at it. Uh, you know, I did years of uh, of looking over that and, t and teaching people. When we did our CAM uh, class, we actually set, we didn't go out and preach and talk to anybody for probably six to eight weeks. It was all in the class. We prepared a testimony. We memorized an outline of what to present to people and the scriptures that backed up all those statements. And the reason we did that, it wasn't so that, you know, you could just be a robot and go through it. It was actually so you knew it so well that you could hold a conversation with somebody. You had the scriptures that you've memorized. The Holy Spirit brings up the right scriptures at the right time. And when you're presenting and talking to people, about uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ, sometimes it can get off track. Well, if you know all the steps and all the things that you want to cover, it doesn't matter what rabbit hole you end up going down, you get back on your conversation and you make sure that you cover everything they need to know to make that decision by the time you get through sharing. So it really does take a lot of work and a lot of study. You've got to know the scriptures. So uh, can you put up uh, Second Timothy there? So, this is uh, Paul talking to Timothy, telling him to be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
you know, it takes time, it takes effort, and it will take some studying to, to learn the scriptures that go along with presenting a full gospel presentation to somebody in a few minutes. There again, you don't want to be trying to tell everyone about the whole Bible and try and condense it down a half hour. You want to be able to have a conversation with people and in about 10 minutes be able to show them all the things of what God has done, why we need it, what he's done to recover us, and to present the gospel. So, uh, you will find that there will be some people that even after you present a gospel, they'll they'll reject it. They're not rejecting you, they're rejecting God. So it, it doesn't matter. We still get out there and we, we do present it. But if you don't do it as a Bible-based, the words of the Bible, presenting it to them, it's just you and, and God, God's going to have a hard time working with that. It's not that he can't, but you know we need to make sure we're using scriptures because there's power and there's authority in the, in the scriptures and the word of God. And uh, just like, and just in the uh, going back to the uh, testimony in Revelations 12, it does say that you know you, they overcame by the blood, blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So you know it, it's really not only the blood of Jesus that that saves us, but your testimony is powerful and will sway people. So how do you start the? One of the easiest ways to do is, is just to ask uh, someone a question. And the question that we used in CAM was, if someone came up to you and asked, how can I find God, what would you say? Now, as soon as that person gets ready you know, to give you that, the answer on that, you can tell immediately if they know what the, the Bible says about being saved. You know, you might get someone that says, oh, well, you know, God's just everywhere, so you can just go out in the forest and be one with the trees and... You know, there's people that believe that, you know. So, I mean, you can get a variety of different answers. Someone might have actually accepted Jesus Christ as a, a young child, but never continued to read the Bible, to grow and develop. So they really may not know all the details of what being saved really incorporates. So once you uh, ask them, uh, you know, you'll know they're saved by, by their answer. Uh, if you share, and then uh, if saved, if that person is already saved, then what you want to do is be able to like, share the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can just ask them if they, you know you want to be you know need some prayer, you come into prayer agreement. So uh, if we have some time today, I'll probably walk through uh, sharing uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit with people too. And uh, if anything is off from what the Bible says, then. After that first question, you can say, well, the Bible's very specific about how we can be reconciled, how we can be saved and have eternal life with God, and just ask them, can I share that with you? And most people say, say yes, you know, unless they're so opposed to the Bible, and, and some people have different uh, reasons not to do it, but for the vast majority of people, if you say, can I just share with you, they'll say yes. So then it's a matter of, being prepared and what you're going to share with people. So, the first thing that someone needs to know is that sin has separated us from God. And so, that's why we need to be saved. It is sin that has separated us from God. We were created to be, uh, to have fellowship with God, but Adam and Eve's disobedience allowed sin to enter us and our world. So, you need to be familiar with the, uh, Adam and Eve in Genesis, uh, Genesis 3, Genesis 4, and what happened in that garden and how sin, you know, came in and separated us from God. Uh, Romans 3.23, I think I already said this one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And there's a lot of other scriptures with that, and I do have a, a a full set of notes of not only this, but a couple other gospel presentations uh, for everyone. And there's several scriptures in here. And if you really look up sin and separation from God, you can see there's hundreds of, of scriptures that talk about how we're separated from God from uh, when, when sin. So once you've established that uh, sin is separated from God, then the next step is to talk about the blood. 
It is the blood of Jesus Christ that brings us back into a, a right relationship with God. And when you talk about the blood, it's not only just the blood, but it's about Jesus Christ and that he is the Son of God and come to, you know, God in the flesh coming to us. So without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. That's Hebrews 9, 22. The Old Testament has over 100 scriptures about sin, about sin and sin offerings. These involve a sacrifice, the shedding of a blood. These cover the sins of the Israelite, but had to be repeated over and over and over again because the only thing uh, that the blood that was shed at that time did was cover sins. It did not forgive sins. Even when you look at the uh, Old Testament and Adam and Eve, you know, once God came and there was sin, God had to make animal tunics for them to cover them up. So there was a shedding of blood from the very beginning, and all that did, it said, the Bible says, covered their nakedness. So it was covering their sin, and even from the very start, there was a shedding of blood to cover sins. Once you get uh, into the Israelites and, and how God wanted them to uh, be forgiven, it was sin offerings, and there was always shedding of blood in those offerings. But God had a better plan. So in John 1, 1, it starts off saying, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Drop down to verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory, the glory of the only begotten Son. So in John, it tells us that Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh, and from there, you can see that, you can start sharing that, Jesus paid the price by going to the cross. He shed his blood. You know, there, there's a, a, a lot of scriptures that, that talk about uh, his righteousness, that he's not uh, part of, you know, he never, even though he walked in, in the flesh, was here on this earth, he did not sin. So he was a perfect sin offering for us. And so I've got a lot of those scriptures referenced, but I do want to look at uh, the one, First John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So when we talk about the blood, it's the need for the blood to cover our sin, and that Jesus is the sacrifice that cleansed us from all sin. It didn't cover the sin, it cleansed us. It washed washed it away. And you know, the other part in that too is that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, you know. If you walk around and you're a jerk most of the time, you're not going to be very successful presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, our behavior and how we're seen walking in that light sets up a lot of, a lot of things for us to do, how we interact with people, how they'll accept us. Uh, I was thinking this morning, I don't know, probably just to share this, I guess, the, uh, going back to when uh, Pat and I opened a, a restaurant here in town, and it was called The Lighthouse, and we had gospel music playing. And, you know, we really wanted it to be a place for Christians to come. And, I mean, we had youth groups go in there. I mean, there were salvations, and a lot of good things happened in there. But we uh, did end up closing it down. We didn't make money. In fact, we lost money. But uh, during that time, I was working full-time during the day, and then I'd come home at night, and I'd go to the restaurant. And when we were busy, you know, it, to me, I'm, I get I get really focused. Pat would call it I'd be in the zone, and uh, you know it's like you've got to have multiple orders of stuff. You want everything cooked at the same time to come out, be hot, set it up there, get it served before it gets cold, and that's where my mind was all the time. And one day, my son looked at me and goes, "You're mean," and it was like, "What?" It, I. I just couldn't comprehend it, but I stepped back and I started thinking about it. It's like, yeah, you know, I, I get in this zone, and I, I wasn't thinking about how I was saying things to anybody else. It was just I wanted to get it done, I'm barking orders and everything. And so, you know, that really changed my attitude, and, and that we really have to be that way all the time. We've got to be on guard in how we're behaving. You know, there's a light shining on you, especially if you start going out to present the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
there, there's a, a target on you and a big spotlight. People will see how you behave and how you act. Do you really believe this? So anyway, we need to, to be very careful on that. So it is the blood. The next step is uh, we need to let people know they need to repent. And all repent is, it's a decision to change. I'm doing it this way. I decided I'm going to change, and I'm going to do it God's way. So it's a decision to change. We need to recognize our sin and decide to change. And let's look at Acts 2.38 real quick. There's several other uh, scriptures on repentance. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we need to repent before we can move on with anything else. It's pretty clean, cut, and dry. The next portion that many, many people, and really that's all you really need to, to know, is that, you know, we're, our sins have separated from God. It's the blood of Jesus that brings us back into right relationships. We repent, and then we accept Jesus. And a lot of times people will leave it at that and kind of walk away. But one of the most important things you can do when you're sharing gospel with, with people is also let them know that they need to do what they say they believe. So doing what you say you believe will cause change and growth in you. So I can accept, and there's tons of people who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, but have never grown past that. You know, they just stay right there. They don't go to church. So one of the things when you present the gospel to somebody is to explain that they need to start reading the Bible. They need to find a Bible teaching church. They need to spend time in prayer. And that will start to change them. They'll start to grow. And without that, they're just hanging out there in the wind, flapping around, and a good target for the devil to come pick off. So part of a gospel, good gospel presentation will also explain to them that they need to change and grow, and the way they do that is through the Bible, through attending a good Bible teaching church, and prayer. And prayer isn't just talking to God, but it's also listening, listening for his voice. So uh, let's look at Hebrews 5.13. And note for... In the notes, when you see that, would be actually 12 through 14. Because it, one thing when you're reading scriptures, just don't always read the scripture itself, but before and after, get the full context, and that you can really speak to it and talk to it much better. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. Well, that's how we all start off, and there's a lot of people that still remain that way. We want to make sure we start them off and let them know that. We don't, they should not have to stay as a babe in Christ the whole time. You grow, you mature, become a full adult. Okay, so once you've presented the good news with scriptures that confirm what you are saying, you should ask the person that you have shared with that they would like to choose God's way for forgiveness of their sins and have a relationship with God. And when they say yes, you just leave them in a simple salvation prayer. And Salvation prayer can be as easy as, Lord Jesus, I want to know you personally. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door to my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life and make me the kind of person you want me to be. So that, that's in the notes uh, and also the, in the notes I've, I've put in there. There's a, a good way to, to give a gospel presentation. It's called the Four Spiritual Laws. And that whole, I've put out the whole th Four Spiritual Laws in there, the scriptures that go in with it. There's also a good uh, gospel presentation called the uh, Road to Romans, uh, Romans Road to Salvation. And in there, in the notes, it's got how that's all laid out. It's got all the, the notes uh, in scripture in there. It's almost all of Romans. It's amazing. If you just read Romans, you'll have a full gospel presentation because 
the scriptures in there really talk about that a lot. Chapter 6, 7, and 8 especially. But all throughout that, Romans 10, 9, and 10, that believe in your heart, confess your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. There's so many scriptures, and you'll see that all in the in the notes when we pass those out at the end. But uh, one of the things is once you've uh, presented the gospel uh, and someone accepted Christ as their Savior, it's really easy to get them baptized in the Holy Spirit at that time. Now, we all get the Holy Spirit as soon as we accept Christ as our Savior, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a separate uh, action that, that we take. And so, in CAM, we used to have a packet. Not only did we pray for the Holy Spirit, but we also had uh, healing cards. And we would just actually sit down there and we'd walk through Scripture by Scripture. So, you know, you can do the same thing and you can share the Holy Spirit and uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit with anyone just by walking through these... Uh, uh, scripture. So I'm going to. Time is it? Oh, plenty of time. I, I'm always fast, so we'll have plenty of time to do this too. Uh, so sharing the, the Holy uh, Holy Spirit in Joel 2:28 and 29 says, "And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions." And also on my men, men servants and my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So here's a prophecy about the Holy Spirit coming. And the key parts in there is that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. So receiving the Holy Spirit is for everybody. No one's excluded. It's for all flesh. And even in verse 20 when it says, and also on my men servants and maid servants, in the, in the day, that this was uh, would have happened when it was uh, written, men servants and maid servants were considered very low on the totem pole. So you didn't have to be a high class citizen. It, they're even saying, hey, it doesn't matter what your status in life is, it's for you. So the Holy Spirit will be poured out upon everyone. In Matthew three eleven, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandal I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So this scripture tells us that even though you get the Holy Spirit when you become born again, that there is a baptism. And that's exactly what uh, John the Baptist called it. He called it, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So this is a separate step beyond receiving the Holy Spirit when you get saved. In Acts 1.4, and being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. So if you look at that scripture, the promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit. So not only it's, does it say they'll pour it out on all flesh, but it's a promise. We have a promise of receiving the Holy Spirit from, from Jesus. Acts 1.8 tells us that you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witness to me in Jerusalem and to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is, is there to give us power, and if you're going to be giving a, a presentation, presenting the gospel to people, you want the Holy Spirit. So if you've never had that experience of receiving the Holy Spirit, a baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, Let's make sure we get that done today, too, because that will give you the power, and then you'll be the witnesses to Elsinore and to Riverside and California and to the United States. Acts 2.4, And they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is one of the things that uh, in presenting and in, in praying for someone to receive the Holy Spirit, getting their, their, their spirit language, which is also uh, known as tongues. It, the scripture tells us it's the spirit that gives them the utterance. So uh, when you share the scripture, it can let people know that it's not what they're going to do, but it's the Holy Spirit. And it's just something inside. And 
and you don't have to try and struggle and relax for it or uh, struggle and fight for it. You just relax and you let the Holy Spirit do his thing and there's an utterance in there and you just let that go. Acts 2, 33. Therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this, which you now see and hear. And this scripture is talking about when Peter was preaching after Jesus had been uh, raised and seated at the right hand of the Father. And the Holy Spirit came at that time and rested on people as tongues of fire. And everyone heard people speaking their own language. And they didn't speak that language before. So when, when you have tongues, it's not only a spiritual language that may not be a known language on today's earth, but there are many instances where people will speak a different known language on this earth that they don't know. and They, 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 they never pr- spoke it before, but yet in that instant, God let someone speak Spanish to someone that only knew Spanish or you know, Japanese, whatever it might be. In this case, they were speaking other languages that other men knew, but the men that were speaking it didn't even know it. So there are many, it calls there's diverse diversity of tongues, many different kinds of tongues in the Bible. And so uh, in this case, when you're getting baptized by the Holy Spirit, it is for a prayer language for you to God. And it's your spirit uh, speaking with his spirit. In Acts 10, 44 through 46, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on them and those heard, those who heard the word and those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with them, uh, with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. But this was at, uh, I believe, at uh, Cornelius' house when Peter went in, and after praying and, and having uh, Cornelius receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, you know, boom, there was tongues. There was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the reason they knew that is because everyone around them heard them speaking in other tongues. Uh, one of the, uh, 1 Corinthians 14.2, and then we'll also go to 32. The 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. So the normal tongue prayer language is for you speaking with God. There are interpretations of tongues, and at times, I said too, there can be people who will speak a different known language. And then verse 32 says, And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Now, by knowing this, we know that you don't have to be afraid about receiving the Holy Spirit and walking down the street and all of a sudden just start talking in tongues and people looking at you and thinking you lost your mind. You know, the spirit of the prophet, uh, and the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets, meaning that I'm in control. And if someone's, you know, walking down the street just blabbering in tongues, you know, I think there's probably something else wrong with that person because, you know, he doesn't have to do that or she doesn't have to do it. We don't have to be afraid that, you know, We've got something weird inside of us. It, you know, we're in control still. Okay? Jude 20. But you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And this is really the one of the biggest uh, advantages to being baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues is that when we pray, we're building ourselves up. Now, I remember years ago, my uh, sister-in-law, she would call me up and uh, and she had uh, not Jehovah Witnesses. Oh, yeah, no, it was Jehovah Witnesses were coming to her door and they were sharing with her. And so she was calling me and asking questions. And, and I hadn't been born again and, and saved that long. And uh, but I also I did have a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so while she was talking, I'd be praying in tongues, you know, just real silently quiet to myself 
And it was amazing just the answers I had for her as a, as a pretty new Christian, you know, that things would come out and uh, it was things that I'd already heard in the Bible, I hadn't really memorized it and put it, to, you know, in the memory bank, but God was bringing things to, to memory, you know, so that's one of the things that uh, the Holy Spirit will do. It will bring things to memory and it will build you up because when you, when you can uh, bring up other scriptures, you know, it's going to strengthen you. Then finally in uh, Mark 16, 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak new tongues. Uh, Prior says speak with new tongues. Yep, speak with new tongues. So that's one of the things that we get when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. We can speak with tongues and it really is evidence that you, that you have it but you get all the other benefits of the gifts of the Spirit. So being baptized in the, in the Spirit, and it's a really easy to just walk through and explain those scriptures to people. And after, when they first get saved, they're open to a lot of things. God's moving on them. They, they do know the Holy Spirit because as soon as they accepted Jesus Christ, He's with them and He's in them. So they're, they're ready for things to move on. And it's not until... You know, we put things aside and let things get, uh, you know, let the cares and worries of this world move us out of position with God that uh, it's it's harder to come back and have this as a secondary step. So anytime you share the gospel, you know, we ought to do that also. So, uh, David, can you pass out those, go ahead and pass those uh, notes out. So in these notes you'll find that it, it does have all the steps that you know I went through as far as having uh, you know sharing with the sin that separated us from God it's got extra scriptures in there beyond what I shared the the blood and the uh, uh, the redemption of Jesus Christ uh, in 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 there as far as, and repenting and then the change in growth so whether it's doing it that way or whether it's the, the roads to Romans or the four spiritual law, the thing it really takes is time and some effort. If, if you don't sit down and you don't put those uh, scriptures in you and have a plan on how you're going to present it, then you may not always give the person that you're presenting to all the full information to make a, a good choice. And so by going through these steps and knowing what you're going to say and having it down well enough that you can get off track with it and still make sure you cover everything, it'll give you all the tools you need to present to, uh, the gospel to anyone that you come in contact with. So, that all being said, I know there's so many people in here that I've seen for so long, and I, I know that you're all saved. Uh, a lot a lot of kids even probably got accepted Christ in uh, Sunday school, you know, Pat and I years ago, or at camp or whatever, but uh, is there anyone that hasn't accepted Christ or Savior or aren't in a position where you really want to be? You know, I, I want, do want to pray with you today. Or if you haven't received the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is a promise of God, it's a good thing from God, and it will help you in your, in your walk with God. So if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'd love to pray with you for that today too. So uh, that being said, uh, just come on up. If, if there's anyone who you know needs or wants any of that or just any other kind of prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let's all stand if we could. Uh, thank you for that word, Ken. Uh, the funny thing about sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ is just a matter of taking that first step of faith. Okay. These are just tools in your hands. I know back in 1987, maybe 1988, my, uh, both my mom and my dad accepted Christ their savior because of what this four spiritual laws said. Okay, now, understanding where they came from, they're both divorced. One year they came out at two separate times to California to visit. And I sat down with them, I says, I've got, I've got to 
get this in their hand, let them make a decision. I handed them a track called the four spiritual laws. And I says, here, this is what this says. This is so they can understand where I'm coming from. And it basically took them through step one, step two, step three. And I said, well, what do you think? He said, does it make sense to you? She goes, yeah, it makes sense to me. I said, well, do you want to accept Christ your Savior? Okay. And both of them, two different times, two different, you know, if you're from a divorced home, it's like it's totally two different worlds. But they both accepted Christ their Savior. Okay. But it wasn't because of anything fantastic I said. It wasn't anything that was amazing. It was just what the Word of God said. And to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, all it takes is for you to step out and present it. Just say, do you know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior? Oh, people just go, oh, yes or no. That's the only thing I, I, they have. And they say, no. I say, would you like to know who Jesus is? And you just go through and you explain because you've read these scriptures, understand these scriptures, and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and God just unfolds the whole story, everything you say. There's lots of tools. There's lots of things you can use. I got tracks. I know uh, uh, our youth group has a, uh, a little booklet that we had to pass out in the high school uh, called the uh, Life Book. Okay, tells the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. They didn't have to do anything. He said, here, I got a gift for you. Boom. And the Holy Spirit does the rest. I don't know how many kids have got saved out of that. And we'll never know until we get to heaven or somebody comes and tells us. But the important thing is, is that we step out in faith. Okay. This uh, outreach we're doing on uh, December 3rd. Okay. This is, you guys need to go home and read this. If you're sitting in that booth, you'll have to be under, understand what God's going to do. God will bring you the people. You don't need to bring the people. God will put people right in front of you that you need to open your mouth and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with. In whatever vernacular, whatever terms that God have you use at that time. All right. So just, just a step of faith. And there's just those three, uh, three steps. Admit they're a sinner, repent, and accept Jesus Christ. That's it. But, as Ken said, the power of the Holy Spirit, being baptized in the Spirit, gives you that extra, <laughs> okay? And it really draws people. So, now that you've got this stuff, all right, God's going to put people in front of you this very week, okay, that you're going to have to be prepared to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with. Whoever that is, might be at work, might be at school, wherever it is, God's going to put, because now you're going to be held responsible for it. Because now you've heard the word that uh, Ken shared, and now we have to put it into practice. Amen? So let's just uh, go ahead and close in prayer. Ken and I will be up here for prayer if you need it. Uh, if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're here. If you've never accepted Christ your Savior, we're here. Don't leave this place without either one of those. So Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the equipping power of your Holy Spirit, Father. Thank you for your word, Lord, that we can use to bring people to a saving knowledge of who you are, Lord. But Lord, we also understand, Lord, that it's not by anything we do, Lord, except by taking that step of faith. It's by uh, the power of your Spirit that draws people to you. You're the one that saves them, Father. You're the one that does all the work needs to be done. All we have to do is just step out and believe that, Lord, you're going to speak to that person and you're going to see them come to a saving knowledge of who you are. And, Lord, even though we may not understand how you work all the time, and we can be, it can be full of rejection where people say, no, nah, I don't even want nothing to do with that. Lord, we also understand that the seed's been planted by our faith because we step forward. We just thank you, Father. You use us, Father, for bringing people to a saving knowledge of you, who you are, Lord. And, Father, we just know during this next season, Father, uh, there's going to be a lot more that's going on, Lord, because the time is getting closer to the end. And, Lord, we've got to step it up and bring as many people into the kingdom of God as we can. In Jesus' name, use each and every one of these folks here this morning, Father. And, Lord, just equip them, Lord. Watch over and protect us throughout this week, Lord. Let it be the most awesome week we've had, Father, in a very long time, Lord, because we're listening to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Thank you, Ken. We're up here if you guys need prayer.